Thank you. Um, so, Taming the Browsers of Tomorrow. My name is Florin. Um, this is a picture of me uh, back when I was really cool. Um, nowadays, I just uh, work a lot. Uh, I work at a small company in the Netherlands uh, called DigitPaint. And we do mostly front-end work. And my job is to, uh, to actually um, get people together to work on front-end. And I, I'm also uh, the guy that gets to experiment with new stuff. So I'm going to talk about things in the browsers and APIs. And big things are happening in the browsers. Especially this year, it's, there's really going on a lot. And the browsers, they are getting smarter and more aware of their surrounding. And actually, you, um, seven, seven years ago, you had no input like uh, video, um, audio, or the touch input wasn't, basically wasn't really there. So I'm, this talk will be about APIs, but I'm not going to talk about the big stuff. We, um, yeah, to, as I said, 2013 was really great, but I'm not going to talk about the shadow DOM today because that has been covered a lot. There's a lot of blog posts around, uh, around on the internet. That there, are a lot, there are a lot of talks this year about shadow DOM. I'm also not going to talk about WebGL. It's really awesome, but not today. Also, no, not going to talk about WebRTC. Um, also, these technologies are awesome and are cool. And I'm, but I'm going to talk about six pieces of small magic. Um, I think a lot of this is underappreciated. Um, we, uh, we, yeah. The, the, as I said, the talk, you talk a lot about um, the the big stuff, but this is. The small stuff I'm going to talk about. And the first thing I'm going to cover is not re actually not really an API, because they're promises. Um, or they used to be called futures. Um, and I'm going to talk about pr native promises. So, and if you, um, you probably heard about them. And um, yeah, if you have not, this is what the promise is. A promise represents the eventual result of an as asynchronous operation just like a marriage, actually. So, <laughs> um, well, but what does this mean? What, would this, what does this solve? Because if you, you'd say, um, we have events for this. But the thing is, there are two keywords in a sentence. It's eventual and asynchronous. I'm going to, do, I'm going to give a short demonstra dem demonstration with uh, this scenario. You, let's say we have to fetch a list of uh, news items and we want to smartly cache the first item's uh, details. So we, have, we actually want to do a second request to get the first item. So if the user clicks on the first item, it instant, instantly gets the uh, details of that item. So if we had to do this traditionally, we had to do this. I have, um, is this visible? Uh, I can zoom in actually, I think. That doesn't seem to work, but um, we have this. Um, I have abstracted the AJAX call into get AJAX fun function. I get a list, um, and when it gets back, um, I have the callback, and we uh, check if the result's there, and then I'm going to do stuff, and, I hand, and, hand, and, and I have to handle the failure. This is really just quite abstract, but um, so if we continue, um, we have to want to get the details as well. So we do the catch Ajax, we get the list, then we see if the list is there, um, and we do the second request, and if the second request returned in the callback, we will actually call the cache result, so if the user clicks it, it's, it's be right there. Yeah. <laughs> we are in call, so-called callback hell now, and um, this is just a simple scenario. If we want to go uh, deeper, um, yeah, this gets worse and worse and worse. If you want to solve this with promises, we are going to do it like this. Um, we get the list, and then we call the get Ajax call, now returns the promise. 
So, and we can call then, and then takes two parameters. The first is uh, the, success the success callback, and the second one is the failure callback. The cool thing is that I do not have to call then immediately. I can just say, um, okay, I'm going to fire off this Ajax call, and I'm going to, going to do some other stuff, and finally, um, when I'm ready for it, I call the then, and it will return immediately, um, of course, still asynchronously, but, um, or it, if it still has to wait to, for the request to finish, it will return later. If we continue on our example, um, I get the list again, then uh, if we have a success, uh, we are going to get the detail page, and then we are going to chain them. We are go the second result is down here. Um, when the first is done, the second then will trigger, and so we can actually cache the result. This is much re more readable code. This is an, another example, this is really cool, it's called, you can also do promise.all. Um, I have a little uh, example here that mm, it doesn't really do much because I have uh, made a function that returns a promise right here, um, and it just times out for X, X milliseconds, and when it's done, it calls the resolve function. This is really basic, really basic, because I don't handle the reject uh, case, and so um, what I can do now, I can just ask promise.all sleep five, five seconds, or two, and uh, another one for two seconds, and if we're all done, this one gets called with, um, with an array of uh, the return values of these, and, if, and the fail, failed ones will get back here. If you want to do this in, with callbacks, you'd have to write code that would, in every callback, checks, uh, check via a global variable if the other callback's already done, and if I'm the last, I will now uh, execute this code. This is, this is really hard to do without promises. So, I've been talking about promises, and they have been around quite some time, so you have uh, Q is an implementation, RSVP is another one, jQuery deferred um, has been ar around quite long, but it's not really uh, adhering to the spec, but it's, uh, it's a way to handle promises. But um, the cool things, these are native uh, promises, and I found this tweet, and um, the eventual part is the amazing thing here, because if the browser, the browser will uh, use promises, you can just ask for uh, the screen uh, for with, with WebRTC, for instance. You have to ask permission, and then you can fire that off and wait for it to return. We can currently use uh, promises in Firefox, in Safari, and in Chrome 32 and up. <coughs> uh, I think Chrome 32 is the current canary. And it's actually going to come to IE because uh, IE has publicly they said they will want to support this. Continuing on to another little API. This one is actually an API. It's called Ambient Light Events. And this is its definition. When a device light sensor detects a change uh, in the light level, it notifies the browser by firing a device light event. And once the event is captured, the event object gives access to the light intensity expressed in LUX. Lux is a, a measurement of how, a, a way to measure light. I'm going to have to switch browsers now. Um, this does not work in uh, Canary. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the demo now. Um, I'm plotting out the, uh, the values of the light sensor. And um, the thing is, um, I was hoping, I don't have a flashlight, so, but I'm, ho yeah, I'm holding my phone uh, on there, and once the, it, the, the sensor detects a lighter, uh, that is lighter, um, it should, yeah, you saw it flashing white, so what you can do is actually change the coloring of your, the contrast of your, uh, in, in, of, of your page by uh, looking at how bright, the, how bright the user is, uh, how bright the, 
<laughs> location is where the user is, sorry. <laughs> um, so, but how would this uh, look like in code? It's really simple because we just uh, add an event to the window and we listen for a device light uh, event. And when it gets, uh, when, the, when the value changes, we can uh, plot out event.value. And the example you just saw uh, for changing the background color, background color um, is like this. When the lux value goes below 50, we'll add a class dark light um, to the HTML uh, element, and if it gets above that, we will add bright light and remove the dark light. So we can actually, yeah, switch based on the light intensity. This is currently working on mostly Firefox, um, and it doesn't currently work on Windows. Um, I have read they're working on that, but it works on Firefox OS and in Firefox for Android. And um, if you research it, there is a pretty cool movie on uh, what you, other things you could do, uh, do with it. So that was Device Light API. Another small one is the Vibration API. Um, yeah, this background image is, um, I know you probably think about different images, and I, uh, I thought to keep it family friendly, so uh, um, this is really simple. Um, I can't, cannot really demonstrate this because, yeah, my uh, most laptops don't have vibrating devices in them. Um, but it's really easy, you just call navigate.vibrate and uh, um, the number of milliseconds you want it to vibrate, and there you go. You can also make patterns, uh, navigator.vibration, and you pass it an array, and then every second um, element in the array is a uh, pause. So in this example, you would vibrate for 100 milliseconds, then pause for, 20, for 50, and continue for another 100. There are, of course, some, uh, uh, some security measures built in, like you cannot, uh, in the specification, you cannot uh, activate the vibration when you're not the visible page. You, most of the browsers have implemented a limit of the, on the time you can actually use, uh, you can uh, vibrate at, uh, 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 on end, so um, yeah. You can currently use this in Firefox on Android, and Chrome 32 on Android. I just uh, saw that this uh, is going to be in Chrome 32. Um, so you cannot actually in install this at the moment, I think, from uh, a run-of-the-mill marketplace, but um, it's going to be in there. The big gap here is, of course, uh, iOS and Safari. It's a bit sad, but it's how it is. <coughs> Web Speech API. This is also pretty cool. I'm going to have to switch browsers again because this one actually only works in Safari. Let's see if we can turn up the volume a bit. Great. <laughs> this, this really makes me feel like in the Windows 95 days when you could make these uh, uh, script in Visual Basic script these uh, talking avatars, avatars. But it's really cool that we have this. But um, it's also pretty simple. You set up an utterance. Uh, the class name is a bit long, but what can we do about that? Uh, speech synthesis utterance, hello, side view, attendees, and then we set up um, some how we want this to be uh, set. So the volume is uh, <laughs> set to one, the rate is the, the speech, uh, how, how fast it's going, and the pitch is how high and the language um, you wanted to uh, have it pronounced in. And then in the end, you just say window speech synthesis dot speak, uh, the utterance we just created. There's, in the specification, you can also specify um, what voice you want to use, love via the voice uh, URI, um, but this does not seem to work anywhere at the moment. Um, this is just one part of the speech web, keys, web the speech API web speech API because this is output the or synthesis. The second part is recognition, and this is also where you um, uh, like you have seen for the TVs, but you can actually do this in the browser. Currently, I think it's only in Chrome. Um, this is 
this needs an internet connection, so I cannot really demonstrate this right now, um, but it's, it's also, it's a bit more complicated. Um, we start, the web, we initialize a new WebKit speech recognition object. Um, so you see it's pre prefixed with a WebKit um, there. Um, we tell it we want to have continuous recognition, so if we, if we stop speaking, it doesn't stop, so, so we can keep on talking and it will keep on rec recognizing what we are saying. The language we're talking, um, we want to have interim results. Um, this means that even if the result is not yet final, because the uh, recognition process um, takes a while to uh, get to a final result, like you're saying a word, so halfway the word, it does, uh, uh, it makes an assumption of what you're going to say. Uh, and in the end, you will get a uh, final result for that uh, word or sentence. And then we start it, so you could, we could start talking, and we have uh, there the unresolved uh, event handler. And in there, we can do all kinds of things from the, feed, from the input we get. And when we're done uh, recognizing, we just stop. This currently works in Chrome 25 and up. This is only the input part, and you need an active internet connection because the recognition is actually happening on the Google servers. Um, the output part, as you just, just saw before, uh, works on Safari 6.1 uh, and up, um, on desktop and on iOS 7. Um, and it's, this API is coming to Firefox and the uh, speech synthesis part is also in Chrome 30C. That's going to be the next canary. I, actually, I just saw a tweet last night that this will be in Chrome 33. So it's pretty neat. Actually, I'm going pretty fast. Um, because I have two more left. But uh, first, I, I lied. I said I wouldn't, going to, uh, I wouldn't be talking about WebRTC. Yeah, I just saw this demo a couple of weeks ago, and it's just like, yeah, I wanted to do this really a long time because it's so annoying that I have to use Skype to share my screen with my, uh, with my remote coworkers. So um, there was this demo as in, in Chrome that you can actually share your screen. There are some limitations, though. You can only use it in, uh, uh, on an HTTPS server. Um, this is probably a good thing <coughs> because you wouldn't want your screen to be shared on a regular uh, HTTP connection where everyone could or may, may, may be listening in. So um, it pops up this. You want to share your screen? Yes, I want to. Um, so I'm actually just this playing uh, here. I'm go going uh, go like this. <laughs> um, so this is pretty, pretty neat. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now. And it also just works in the basic uh, navigate to get user media. media. Um, but ex apart from that, we are not asking for video. We're actually telling the browser what video source we want to use. Um, and then there's the Chrome media source screen. And then we uh, got the stream here, and we output it to a video element, <coughs> and we append that to the, to the body. As I said, this just works in Chrome 26 and up. Um, but it's really cool, and I hope other browser vendors will implement this. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about uh, today, the service work, and I'm really excited about it. By the way, this is not a slide I created. This is a slide I've, uh, uh, Bruce Lawson from Opera um, uses and showed this on the, at the Frontier Conference in the Netherlands. Uh, but I think I was like, then when I was looking at this uh, slide, I was like, whoa, if I'm ever going to talk about service work, I want this slide. So I asked him if I could use it, and he said, uh, yeah. So what are service workers? I'm really, really excited about those. Um, service workers allow us to persistently cache resources and handle requests to these resources even when the network isn't available. This means we can make offline offline app, but you'd say, yeah, okay, because we got, we got app cache um, or other caching mechanisms for that. But the thing is, with app cache, it's declarative. It's, we can, uh, th there are a lot of drawbacks. Um, it's, we have to think up front what we want, what we want to cache, and then, um, yeah, if once it's cached, we are having a lot of trouble uh, getting it out of the cache. And 
service workers g give us a way to prog uh, fire code uh, to control this uh, mechanism. They consist of two parts, a shared worker slash controller that lives across page loads and a programmable <coughs> HTTP cache. <coughs> so a little example how this would work. Um, first, uh, on the first page load, we are going to register the service worker. Um, we are uh, saying we want to handle everything on slash uh, star um, with this controller. And as you see here, they're using promises. Um, once uh, we have it has been registered and uh, initialized, we can, it will handle all subsequent requests on this domain. Um, that's why it says here, um, if you want to use service worker immediately, you might call window location reload, because that will mean that the current HTML page also would be handled by this uh, uh, service worker. This is what the worker looks like. Um, it's pretty much like a service worker. Uh, I'm going to run through this code uh, real quick. Um, we have here a base URL and uh, an inventory URL. Uh, we have the install event li uh, listener. So when we call the register, when we, on the previous pay, uh, slide, we call the register um, function and it all, everything works well. In the worker, the install event gets called. And in this install event, we are telling the, uh, the whole mechanism, yeah, we are handling fetch here. This is something, actually, I talked to uh, Alex Russell um, last night from Google. He's working on this, on this spec. And um, this is something that may look a bit uh, weird right now, but there will be more events uh, for streams, for instance, uh, in the future. So, and then we listen to this fetch event and see what comes in. This is really just a basic example to uh, see when, the, when we have a request for services inventory data JSON, we are going to respond with an empty JSON object right here. So this is pretty useless, but you can um, imagine what you could do it, like stuff, <laughs> stuff like, uh, which is really hard to do right now when you have uh, also a news app and you want to uh, show the cache, the first you want to show, if, if you open the app, you want to have an immediate result on there. So you open the, ca uh, you open, uh, uh, you show them the cached result you already have. And in the meantime, you're going to find in the worker, you're going to fire off a request to get more data or newer data. And if this does not work, um, and if it, if it comes in, you can update it. And if it doesn't work, you maybe get a generic error and you just set the bottom of the page, yes, sorry, we cannot load any new data because you may or may not be online or may, there may be something wrong with your connection. The thing is, <laughs> This is just the specification right now, um, and it's in flux, but I'm really excited about this when this is going to happen. Um, it's really cool. Um, when I started uh, researching this for this presentation, um, I was looking into uh, um, if it worked in Chrome, and then I saw some, uh, there, was, there is some basic scaffolding code in there, but because the, the um, primitives are there, um, but it doesn't really do anything. So, but there are, there is a lot of stuff going on around these service workers. They're previously using, previously they were called navigation controllers. And what you see here is a, a Google Plus post by Paul Irish. And he links to the intent to implement for uh, Mozilla. So they're also into this. And Chrome is obviously working on it. So this is going to happen, I hope, next year. Um, so, there's my, this were, these were my six little things. There is much more uh, I could not cover in this talk. Uh, the MIDI API, so this would basically mean you can ditch, if you're, in, if you're into music, you could ditch GarageBand. You could do all this in your browser, have your, your, uh, your keyboard um, input directly to your browser. Battery status API, it's been around quite a while. It's also pretty simple little API, but you can do 
um, yeah, fun stuff with it, like when you're going, trying to go offline, uh, your battery is dying, you can just quickly save some stuff. The Web Crypto API and the URL object, it has been uh, standardized I guess, pretty, pretty recently. I, these are just the thing, uh, so some of the things, and I think we as web developers um, should look into this. Um, we're, we're, most of our time we're busy um, making money or making money for our clients, and it's, we have to stick that, to stuff that works. And, but I think we need to do this. We, we need to research this. We need to, tr to do experiment with these APIs, not only to improve, get them improved, because um, just last night I was talking about the service worker with Alex Russell's, uh, Russell, and he was asking me what I think, thought about it, because they want to have the input to improve this and make it actually usable. And if we use and experiment with this, browser vendor have more incentive to actually implement them. So we, we will not ever uh, get into an IE6 situation anymore. So that is my, this was my talk. I'm uh, yeah, pretty, doing pretty well on schedule, I think. Uh, so thank you very much. <laughs>